Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. New session of Parliament kicks off with the annual ceremonial opening. Brace for water restrictions in the corporate area and later in sports, win this complete victory over Zimbabwe in second test. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shimela Pullen. Here are the details. Changes are coming to the operations of the National Housing Trust, NHD, as part of the government plan to increase home ownership in the new fiscal year. Governor General Sir Patrick Allen announced that other initiatives in Parliament a short while ago during the throne speech. The National Housing Trust will introduce a new financing model which will entail partner arrangements with regulated mortgage lending institutions. This framework is intended to significantly increase the supply of mortgages, while at the same time release funds to focus on the development of affordable housing. The legislative priorities of the Office of the Prime Minister in 2023-2024 will be the registration, births and deaths amendment act, the access to information amendment act 20, 2002, and the National Archives and Records Management Bill. Curbing crime and violence continues to be a top priority with the new Firearms Act. Now in effect, other legislative changes will be pursued. Amendment to the Fingerprints Act. Two, amendment to the Immigration Restriction Commonwealth Citizens Act and Aliens Act. Review of the Corrections Act. Amendments to the Proceeds of Crime Act poker to include unexplained wealth. The pomp and pageantry of the ceremonial opening of Parliament is back. Jamila Maitland reports from Gordon House where, for the first time, there was no COVID-19 protocols. Thanks, Jamila. It's 2023, but according to supporters of the Jamaica Labour Party and the People's National Party, well, it feels like 2020, right before the COVID-19 pandemic, and crowds of people swarmed Duke Street to see their favourite member of parliament and other specially invited guests walk into Gordon House. Well, with the DRMA now withdrawn, there was no mask mandate or social distancing, and so the crowd returned bringing with it its usual challenges for the police. We'll ensure this morning that the thing is done. Orderly. Yes, sir. Uh, with respect for law. True. Yes, sir. I will assume my stance at an appropriate time. And when I stand here, all other persons are to be beyond you. Beyond you. Okay. All right? Beyond as long as you're not in line with me or to my right. From the excitement of students at the St. George's Primary and the Infant School, seeing the soldiers and the politicians, to the supporters themselves hugging and embracing each other and the politicians, well, everyone seems to be pleased that the COVID-19 pandemic is seemingly over. Reporting from Gordon House on Duke Street, I'm Jamela Maitland for TVJ News. Thank you, Jamelia. Now to other news, the National Water Commission will be implementing supply restrictions in the corporate area over the next 24 hours. This is in order to slow the fall in water levels at the two main catchment facilities. Kimon Witter reports. The reduction in water levels is due to a dry spell affecting sections of the island. The Hermitage Dam is at 63% of capacity and the Mona Reservoir is at 76%. Acting Corporate Public Relations Manager at the NWC, Delano Williams, says there has been a sharp dip in water levels at the two main corporate area facilities. Now, by themselves, the numbers do not readily shock you. But what we have to look at is the rate of fall. We may have gotten to this point at the Mona Reservoir over a space of about two months, while if the 
current trends continue, we're going to find that the same rate of fall is going to happen in a shorter period of time. So effectively, we're going to be losing a lot more water in less time. And this is because of the fall in river inflow. So we're not getting as much water as the rivers dry up. There is less water coming in and the demand from the network. So in order to meet that, we're going to end up drawing down a significant amount of water that is in storage. Mr. Williams says while water levels are not at critical stage, the adjustment is necessary to ensure supply over the next few months. The forecast tells us, for instance, that we may not have any significant rainfall until maybe May, June. And last May, we found that there was less than the 30-year average. So realistically, we may be looking at June before some significant rainfall comes. Our job at the National Water Commission is to ensure that the storage levels are not depleted before we get to June. And Mr. Williams is encouraging corporate area residents to prepare for water lockoffs. He says areas below the Ministry of Justice on Constant Spring Road in St. Andrew will be receiving water from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Areas above the Ministry of Justice will be served overnight. Areas into Havendale, off Rebels Road, going down to Mullines intersection, onto Perkins Boulevard. Those areas will be served primarily between 6 p.m. and overnight into early morning. So again, we're asking persons, it will take some adjustment, but we're asking for your patience, your understanding, and in reality, your adjustment to these changes. Kimon with a reporting for TVJ News. Agriculture Minister Pernell Charles Junis says the sector continues to record improved growth. This he attributes to the efforts of the country's farmers who, despite the challenges in the sector, continue to till the soil. Mr. Charles Junis was speaking at the launch of the Hague Agricultural Show in Trelawney recently. Twenty twenty one saw Jamaica with its highest recorded level of production, seven hundred and seventy thousand four fifty six tons. Twenty twenty two saw four consecutive quarters of growth, with Jamaica for the first time ever surpassing eight hundred thousand tons with 846,508 tons of domestic crop. It's now time for the Business Minute. The operators of the Sangsta International Airport in Montego Bay say the runway expansion work is on schedule to be completed by June this year. Once complete, the facility will meet the requirements of the International Civil Aviation Organization and improve the runway safety. The runway work will extend the distance available for takeoff from 2,662 meters to 3,060 meters. MBJ says the winding of taxiway, echo and jet blast screen installation are also advanced with expected completion by March. The contract is valued at 34 million US dollars with the total runway expansion project valued at 70 million US dollars. In business internationally, Japan's Toshiba Corporation has cut its annual earnings estimate after a third quarter profit slump and its chief operating officer resigned over the inappropriate use of entertainment expenses. The weak performance and the departure of its COO come at a time when the scandal-ridden industrial conglomerate is assessing a binding buyout proposal from a consortium led by private equity firm Japan Industrial Partners. Hit by weak demand for hard disk drives from data center customers, Toshiba said quarterly operating profits fell 88% to 5.3 billion yen or $40.4 million, far below the definitive consensus estimate of 37 billion yen. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Shane Masters. 
We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report with Jermaine Brown.